everybody, it's Pandy. I'm playing Red Orchestra 2, Heroes of Stalingrad. This is day three of my beta video marathon. The video is featuring a new map that's just been released on beta. I don't know when it was released, but I just know it's been released, and it's called Barracks. It's a heavily urban type gun battle type where buildings all have like hundreds of rooms with hundreds of windows on a military type base. Yeah, I kind of exaggerated, but... Eh. After looking at some pictures of military, Soviet military bases in the early 1950s, it kind of looks like Tripwire did some good research in recreating these military bases. I really don't know, if, you know, in 1939 or 1940s that, you know, Soviet military bases look like this, but it looks like one in the 50s. Now, you'll notice that all the buildings look similar from the outside, but once you get inside of them, you can tell which function that they were used for per their objective name and what's in them and etc. The overall environment looks kind of lifelike, considering that it's in the middle of a war and it's full of destruction everywhere at the same time. Because of the number of buildings and number of windows and purely the number of players, one slight mistake on your part will lead to your death and it's quite evident. I mean, you can just run across the street and you'll get mowed down by an MG or walk up to a window and get hit by a rifleman. Uh, the disadvantage of a 64 player server is the fact that if you have all those slots filled, there's 32 players on the other side of the team within a like 200, 300 square, like, um, like a hundred square meter area that's willing to shoot you. That's a lot of eyes with a lot of crosshairs aiming for you. Now this map does have its moments where it makes you jump out of your seat and giving you an adrenaline rush from time to time. It's because it's purely insane. I mean there's a lot of people moving around you're trying to keep track of what's happening around you and what you want to do and you get really focused into the game more or less trying not to die but it makes you jump out of your seat when it does. Like there's one part one point someone comes up behind me hits me with a rifle and it, it kind of just it, it's a pretty cool effect that they made in the game because it forces forces you to focus on just key aspects and if you get that tunnel vision you're gonna get fucked because tunnel vision in real world military combat will make you lose focus and that's what I was happening I was trying to focus into the game so hard I got tunnel vision and I lost focus of what's going on that's kind of fucked up ain't it now I don't know if I really suck at shooting or whether or not it's built into the game but I have to say one of the hardest things to do in this game is to aim and kill something. I think that's kind of the point. You know, good players will kill them, main people more easily, I guess. I don't know. But usually I'm pretty good at picking off targets and games and such like Counter-Strike and Battlefield 2 and Modern Warfare 2. And I'm usually relatively decent at shooting. It's just, this game is harder. I don't know what it is. I think the combination might have something to do with the crosshairs themselves. It seems like the crosshairs in this game are particularly smaller compared to the rest of the environment. I mean, you only have like such a little area on your crosshairs and such a big screen. Now the bullet does go where the crosshairs are, but there's so much room for air because you have a, such a little area to be able to, you know, that's your kill spot, right? And uh, with the mouse sensitivity, I try to lower mine so that I can more have more control over what I'm aiming at. But if the target's moving, good night. You know, you're not going to be able to hit them unless you're really fucking good or have some luck. That's why I can actually imagine why whenever I was running around a lot of times and someone's like literally like five feet away from me and they're missing. I can see why they're missing because it's so hard to aim. Again, I tried to cope with all these disadvantages by lowering the mouse sensitivity. And I found it a little easier to aim, but even then it's not 100% perfect. In the long run, though, I do know that accuracy is purely based off of time and the, and, and the experience. So eventually I would probably get used to it and figure out the trick of the trade. And, you know, get better at it, get proficient. I did say in day one that I didn't notice ballistics, bolt ballistics all that much. Alright guys, I noticed it. Uh, it's completely related to shooting at targets that are 50 meters away or further. And also, you don't just have to lead the targets when you're aiming at them, you gotta lead them for the bullet drop. Especially with submachine guns when you're trying to hit something that's a decent distance away, the bullet's going to drop and take a bit of time to get there. And when I mean a bit of time, I mean a split second, but that split second is just enough to have that bullet fly right behind them. 
I guess this is another downfall in regards to me sucking at shooting, but it's also a disadvantage that everyone else shares, and I actually like it because it gives you more of an effect when you're running across the street and like 50 million people are firing at you and they're all missing. It's because the ballistics is off. I mean, the bullet is not going to instantaneously show up where your crosshairs are aiming at. It's not going to happen. It doesn't instant. It's not instant. If you're shooting at someone with a submachine gun at 100 meters, you do really, really notice it. Not really much of a huge notice type deal, but you do see it. You do know that you got to aim in front of them a good bit, and you just kind of do that minigun type effect where someone's running and you just pull the trigger in front of them at one point until they run into the bullets. I've done that already once in that snow covered map and I, that's how I really actually noticed it myself. Now word to the wise, to people who are playing Red Orchestra 2 are going to be playing Red Orchestra 2 or the winner of my game uh, giveaway. You know, word to the wise. If you're playing a squad leader, try to be sneaky, try to live. I found that the games are influenced by good squad leaders in regards to, you know, being out forward but not too forward where you get killed or being sneaky enough to where you don't get killed or good enough to not get killed. In the long run, it's the winner of the game because, you know, you guys will notice at the end of the video that I pretty much hide in the Soviet cap zone so that my teammates can spawn in and help me cap. I found it amazing that people won't go to the cap zone to uncap it for nothing, especially if it's getting capped. It's like, uh, it's like someone's like, uh, someone else will take care of that. I'm gonna go over here and miss, you know, I'm gonna shoot and miss. I don't know. Uh, if someone runs into the cap zone, uncap it, and if you're the squad leader, try to stay alive so, you know, if you're in a forward position, stay alive, don't do anything super risky unless you have to, and allow your teammates to spawn in where you're at. It's kind of one of those functionality that they took from uh, BF2 or uh, Project Reality, I guess. The combination of the two. Now this is a beta video with a voice commentary, of course. Yeah. So I just want to let you guys know that I am giving away a copy of Red Orchestra 2 on September 12th just to anyone who pretty much posts a comment into one of my beta videos plus going ahead and subscribing to my channel. It should have been the other way around. Subscribe to my channel and post a comment into one of my beta videos. You get yourself a copy of Red Orchestra 2 for a really good comment or video responses of other games. I don't care what kind of responses you guys put up. Just I'm giving you guys the opportunity, and if I think the video is pretty good, I think it's pretty good. You know, I'm sure you guys want people to watch your videos, so you're more than welcome to posting responses. So I thank everyone for watching. Uh, this was Pandy, and <laughs> good hunting. Oh, you know, I almost forgot. Question: What do you think of this map? See you guys.